All right, this is a long video, okay? And it's for everybody that wonders how I prepare my knives for sale or for my own collection. Right now, you're looking at a picture. And the picture basically shows the things that you need. And I have a little description by each one of them. All right, so you got your DMT stone there. And DMT is the company that makes it. And you also have a leather strop with green polishing compound. You have some honing sticks, which are one that's metal, same stuff you use in the kitchen. And then you also have a ceramic stick. Right next to that, you have buffing sticks. These are buffing sticks that females use for their fingernails. And you can also get them uh, from the people that do the pen and knife sites. Okay, These are fantastic for removing scratches and all that stuff. Corrosion erasers, pretty much a gimmick. Uh, I, I find that I don't use them very much and I end up using the buffing sticks for everything. The chemicals to your right are all the chemicals that I feel that you should have if you have a large knife collection. Nothing cleans off uh, your knives better than Ballastol. Ballastol cleans and removes corrosion. Uh, but it's not very good for long-term storage. That's where the mineral oil comes in. Mineral oil is cheap and you can use tons of it. You could actually use just mineral oil for all this stuff if you're on a budget, okay? Uh, next to the mineral oil to the left is what's called Renaissance. Renaissance is, I think I said that right, is what people use for uh, uh, museums and stuff like that. It's fantastic for if you have a knife display to preserve your knives without that greasiness to them but it's expensive and it's like a wax so it takes some time to do but it works very well but it's expensive below that is that yellow tube of polishing compound fantastic for brass knives if you want to remove a green corrosion spot but like I said be careful you do not want to buff out a knife that is 30 years old and make it look like it it just you know got made you know 10 days ago you you destroy the knife when you do that next to that is tough glide tough glide is a dry lubricant people that have guns are very uh familiar with it it's fantastic for preserving your tang stamps without that gumminess i use that an awful lot also so enjoy the video it's like 30 minutes long dude uh, for the people that have been asking me all these questions, I think that I've answered everything and how I use these products to protect my knives and to get ready to sell them uh, so they look fantastic. Enjoy the vid, and that's all I got. I'm out. Well, what are you guys looking at here? Okay, sorry about that. I'm having a little bit of problems with my voiceover. But basically what you got from left to right is you have, uh, these are nail filing sticks. Then you also have a little piece of leather. You have my favorite DMT stone, uh, which is uh, made by DMT. And then you have a, uh, the leather strop which is a custom-made leather strop. And then on top of that, you have yourself some green polishing compound. I'm going to have links to all this stuff just below in the About section on what you guys need to buy. And then next to that, um, you have a, what looks like a piece of metal. That is a honing stick with a stag handle that I actually got from an antique store for about $2. Next to that is your common nail polishing stick. You can get these for $2 at your local drugstore. What you're seeing there is a bottle of mineral oil, and this is a lubricant laxative. And you can pick these things up at any drugstore um, for about $1.50. This stuff works better to preserve your knives and to lubricate your knives better than anything else on the market and it's cheap as dirt um, what I'm showing you there are different types of bottles that you can fill with mineral oil for droppers right there that little metal thing that I'm holding in my hand is an Enochian uh, dripper which is used for 
uh, e-cigarettes, and I'll have a link for that also. It works fantastic to put mineral oil in, and you can get a solid stream. You'll see later in the video me utilizing it, or just a single drop. And then next to the pink uh, stick there on the pad is what's called corrosion erasers. Then you have yourself a toothbrush, and then you also have some scrim chrome polish. And then next to that, you also have, uh, which is used in a lot of different uh, museums around the world, and that is called Renaissance. Renaissance. And that is a polishing slash preservative. It's like a waxy, pasty thing that actually does work very well on your knives, but it's extremely expensive and very time consuming. And then in the far right corner, you have yourself some Ballastol multi-purpose. Um, right now I'm holding in my hand a carbon steel electrical knife which is a fantastic knife that you can pick up all over the place for 15 bucks. And uh, it has some fantastic steel. And I'm trying to compare the difference between the uh, faded or patina look of the older knife, which you want to maintain. And then I'm showing a newer knife that I don't want patina on, which I want nice and shiny and beautiful because it is a modern knife. All right, so throughout this video, I'm going to show you the different that I just showed you right there the tools that I utilize to make all my knives uh, presentable for selling and or my collection. And the number one thing I want to get across to you guys is not to over clean your knives. Um, one thing I cannot stand is when I go to eBay and I see a knife that is close to 80 years old, a Case XX, that looks as shiny as one of your modern Case knives. I can't stand that. That individual has destroyed that knife. And what I'm going to do is throughout this video, I'm going to throw in some footage of me actually uh, accepting a, a shipment of knives and how I clean them. And I will describe a little bit of different things. Uh, right here, you're showing me taking that polishing compound and putting it on my leather strop and showing me using the weight of the knife to polish the edge. You do not want to put a lot of force on doing this. This was a common mistake that I used to make, especially with my Bark River knife, because what you'll get is a micro bevel on your blade, which will create cracking and chipping, which you do not want. Um, the idea behind a strop is to just uh, polish the edge of the sharpened version or the sharpened edge that you have created with your DMT stone. Right there in front of you, you have a custom made knife. This was a fighting rooster knife that had celluloid. Um, handles on it, which basically degassed and destroyed this knife. You couldn't even open up this knife when I received it. Um, I customized it with the help of an individual that uh, used to be in business. And he put uh, stag handles on there for me. And he basically removed all the corrosion on the blades. And basically it looks like a new knife. But in actuality, it's an older knife. But I wanted that knife. Uh, that knife is not uh, of collector value. It is just a customized knife. Right here, you see me throwing on a little bit of mineral oil. And then I'll take a toothbrush and I will rub it in on the stag. And what that will do is preserve that stag in its natural state. It will keep it 
it will keep it moist, it will maintain its color, it will not turn all gray and start cracking and basically destroyed. Um, you can actually take a stag that does have that brown look to it. Um, it's like a chalky um, look to it and put mineral oil on it and let it sit for about an hour. And what the mineral oil will do is it will be absorbed into that stag and it will return that stag to its original look, which is a creamy, beautiful uh, piece of stag that's on a knife. And uh, so mineral oil is just a wonder uh, of science. And the thing is, you want to use 100% mineral oil. Mineral oil is non-toxic. It's used as a laxative. You have, people can actually drink it, and it basically helps you with your bowel movements. Um, so the cool thing about mineral oil, which is drugstore mineral grade oil, is that it's non-toxic. You can actually use it on your knives, cut your apple with it, uh, whatever you want to do, work with food and it's not going to be toxic. Right there I'm actually putting a little bit of Tough Glide on the joints to help preserve the tang stamp because tang stamps are prone to corroding because it's a, a stamp in the blade and it can actually collect moisture or grease or if you use the wrong preservative, it can actually uh, collect that and create a pocket of corrosion. In turn, you will not be able to read your tang stamp, dramatically decreasing the value of any knife that you possibly have. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm wiping off the excess after I've uh, let it soak. Uh, you can kind of see this is like a time-lapse thing that I'm doing for you. I would have actually let that mineral oil soak on there for a good hour, and then I will wipe it off. By wiping it off, what you're doing is you're removing the majority of the mineral oil, all right, and you're... That way it does not collect dust or moisture or get your storing area all goopy and messy. When you remove it, you're going to have a thin layer of mineral oil left on your knife, which will prevent corrosion. All right, what am I doing here? I am actually showing you the difference between the expensive ones and the cheap ones. The expensive ones you can get from... Uh, the websites that uh, people make the you know the fancy pins they will polish the pins to a nice sheen or uh, you can get them on knife websites uh, to polish your knives or to remove corrosion spots they're expensive they're about five or six dollars and they're very difficult to find these cheap ones and I have a link below for them these are used for people that do their nails. You know, women that do their nails, they like to polish them. They will remove, and these things have different levels of grit. You have, you know, the coarse grit, you have the medium grit, you have the buffing grit. And the one that I have a link for has multiple layers. So what you'll want to do is to uh, first try the mildest means possible to remove a corrosion spot which you'll do with your ballastol. Ballastol is a cleaning agent. It is not for storing your knives. Um, you can store some knives with it but it can be extremely corrosive to brass and also knives that are coated with any type of gold or anything like that. Ballastol is used to clean your knife, let it soak for an hour, you want to wipe it off, and then you want to rinse your knives with some mineral oil. Um, here you're showing me use a corrosion eraser. 
all right? And the idea is to stabilize that corrosion. Corrosion will be either a rust spot or uh, it will look like little spider veins. A lot of uh, German knives have this. They'll have, a, it looks like little spider webs coming off of it. And uh, what you'll want to do is to stabilize it, you'll want to remove the rough, rough spot. But in turn, you're going to probably have a little blemish left on your knife. But if you continue to remove it, you're going to be removing that beautiful patina and in turn making a new knife look like a, making an old knife look like a new knife, which you don't want to do. That, that patina is very valuable and there's nothing that can bring that back. Once you've removed that patina, uh, you've destroyed the uh, knife in my opinion. Um, here I'm demonstrating again the patina that an old knife has. Now this is the knife that I use. Um, and I'm actually explaining the difference between sharpening a knife and honing a knife. That metal rod is a knife honer. It does not sharpen your knives. A lot of people say, hey, I'm going to sharpen my knife on this uh, metal hone what a metal hone does is it actually takes that in a, on a microscopic level is, excuse me, on a microscopic level, it's basically taking the edge of that sharpened edge that you have and it's rebending it. It's not removing metal. It is actually bending the... Uh, the folded edge that you created when maybe you cut through a stick or whatever. So the first, you always want to start with the mildest means possible. You want to first see if you can hone the edge. Okay? And if you can't hone the edge, at that point, you're going to use your sharpening stone and you're going to resharpen the edge. And then as a final step, you would hone it or use a ceramic uh, stick. Uh, the best ceramic sticks out there, in my opinion, are the ones that Spyderco makes. Um, or get yourself a, a ceramic uh, stone, which also uh, Spyderco makes. I do, I do not have a link for that, but they make some really good stuff. Here I'm explaining the different grits on your um, your nail or your nail uh, sanding stick and I'm also showing off uh, how beautiful the stag on this fighting rooster looks um, this knife was uh, shined up with a buffing wheel with buffing compound but buffing compound is the same green buffing compound that you guys can use and also the uh, nail file or the nail sander, that pink thing there, can also uh, revitalize an old knife. Uh, because if a knife is beyond repair, uh, you either throw it in the trash or you can customize it like I did with that. Uh, this is... Uh, this is that chrome polish that I'm talking about. There is a link below for that. This works wonderful uh, for your buck knives that have the brass bolsters. Now again, those brass bolsters might have a nice brown patina on them. You do not want to remove that. Um, when I sell a knife, I do not remove it. Um, it's very easy to remove those green spots. So if you see a knife that I have for sale, you say, oh, it's got corrosion on it. It's got green spots on it. Well, those green spots and that brown look can be removed very easily with this chrome polish. Literally, it's a five-minute job. Um, but in my opinion, uh, I don't think you should remove that. I leave that up to the person that purchased the knife if they want to uh, remove that 
25 year old patina they can go right ahead and do it but removing patina on a knife really destroys it it destroys its uh, value um, and that goes for any antique uh, when it comes to shining up maybe an old uh, lampshade uh, fixture or whatever if you remove that patina uh, you've destroyed that artifact um, if you go to museums the same thing you'll see a beautiful patina on many things and they've maintained it because the patina or that brown haze as long as it's not corrosive it's actually very valuable so I hope you guys are keeping up with me. I'm talking pretty fast. There's a lot of information in this video. I recommend you watch it a few times to get all that. Here's a modern case knife. Um, I haven't cleaned it for about six months. And I'm going to show you guys uh, how I clean a knife to maintain its uh, good looks. Um, and to prevent any corrosion. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the knife. I'm going to look for any corrosion spots that are developing any of those filiform spider corrosion spots. But here I am washing the inside out with a uh, ballast doll. And what I would do is I'd actually let that sit for about 30 minutes and then I would take a rag like I am now, wipe it off, and then I'm also going to take the rag and stick it on in the inside of that knife and I'm gonna rub back and forth. It's gonna remove about 90% of the ballastol, but a little bit of ballastol, a thin layer of ballastol is not gonna cause that much corrosion on your brass liners. If anything, it's going to make a patina nice. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a little mineral oil on the uh, stag. I'm gonna let that soak in for about 30 minutes. And what that's going to do, it's basically like, basically like putting lotion on your hands. It's going to uh, keep that stag fresh, full of moisture, and it's not going to crack or turn brown or anything to that effect. So as you can see, I'm wiping off the excess. And remember, this is time lapse. And at that point, I'm going to also wipe out the inside because it's full of mineral oil. You do not want to leave a bunch of mineral oil on your knife when you're about to put it in storage. Right here, I'm explaining that you want to inspect your back springs to make sure that they're not developing corrosion, which as long as it has a coating of mineral oil on it, they will not corrode. Over here, I'm putting a little bit of tough glide on the hinges and on the tang stamp. Tough glide is a dry lubricant, and the cool thing about tough glide is it actually it is toxic, so you don't want to use it on a knife that you're actually going to carry on a daily basis. But for a knife that's going in storage, Tough Glide does a really good job on preserving the internal components for storage. Now that knife is ready for storage, it's been wiped down. All right. But if you touch, let's say you wipe your finger across the bolster, uh, which I'm going to do right there, um, you're going to see that there is a thin layer of mineral oil still on that knife. That is your corrosion prevention that you're going to do. You're not going to soak your knives. I've seen a lot of people just spray their knives down and throw them in a plastic bag and say that knife is ready for long-term storage. You do not want to do that. You want to 
wipe down your knife, clean it, preserve it with a fine layer of uh, mineral oil slash some maybe a little tough glide. And that knife right there is ready for a year's worth of storage. And that's it. That's, that's how you preserve your knives. Here I am again talking about this wonderful $1.50 stick that I bought and how you can use it. <clears throat> the corrosion erasers, I don't use those too much, but they are the mildest means of remo removing a corrosion spot. So I will start with those first. If that doesn't work, I will utilize that sanding stick to remove and stabilize a piece of corrosion. Once you've removed that rust or that, if when you see a corrosion spot, it's almost like a, if you look underneath, underneath the microscope, it's actually like a mound of rust or a mound of corrosion. That corrosion is active. That corrosion is going to uh, continue to grow until you stabilize it. Uh, so removing that mountain of corrosion and then treating it with some mineral oil, meaning letting it soak for about an hour, you have basically stabilized that corrosion. That corrosion is not going to uh, grow any longer or any further. Um, that's what I mean by stabilizing corrosion. This particular knife is a GEC farm tool. It's a very high corrosion, corro corrosion prone metal. I believe it's a 1095. Uh, if you leave a little bit of water or sweat or whatever you're utilizing on that knife, it is going to create a rust mound on it. So you always want to leave a little bit of mineral oil on a knife like that. Every metal is different, and you will learn throughout the years of storing your knives which knives need more attention than others. The stainless steel knives need little to none, but stainless steel knives, these are not the knives that uh, I think are user knives. It's a like the case surgical steel. They don't sharpen very well um, compared to a high carbon steel. And they also, uh, they do maintain their beauty, but they are basically just works of art that are not really made to use. Some people do use them. If you're going to get a user as a uh, case nice, you would go case knife, you would go with their carbon vadium or V, their carbon V steel, which will corrode, but it is the best steel to utilize for a user or EDC knife. Right there I'm demonstrating how you can put a little bit of mineral oil in a small bottle and utilize it just like a dripper. I love this DMT stone. Uh, DMT makes some of the best stones. I have a full, actually a full set of actual bench stones. Um, they're fantastic for my own personal knives, but when it comes to uh, in-field use or on my desk when I'm just preparing knives for uh, sale or whatever, I do find myself always going back to this folding type DMT stone. It's wonderful. It's the red and blue one, which is a coarse and a fine it's not an ultra fine. Ultra fine is a green one, a green colored stone, and I just don't find that I use it. 